Hi, this is uh, Jeff and Colin with Little Bits, you know, Google Hangout. My name is Jeff Littman, um, and I'm the engineering team lead. And uh, I guess my job here at Little Bits is I work with five uh, brilliant and talented, talented other engineers, Rory, Kristen, Ed, Sean, and Alan. And uh, my job here at Little Bits is more or less to facilitate and enable them to do their jobs uh, in the best way that I can. Uh, in addition to that, I also help with some of the design work. And uh, I'm sort of the interface between the engineering department and the rest of the things. I'm Colin Vernon. I'm the cloud lead, and I've been really focused on the cloud bridge for the past uh, year or so. I also am a bit of a bridge myself between uh, web stuff that goes on, uh, the cloud platform stuff, particularly uh, UX and product, uh, the web apps that we're making for the cloud, all this kind of stuff. Um, is the stuff that uh, keeps me up at night. So and I work with a, a number of different people, particularly Jason is a cloud genius, but a number of other programmers are involved. And um, yeah, we have made a very awesome module that we're very excited called the Cloud Bit, and that's what we're talking about today. So we wanted to get the hardware genius and the software wizard. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> together and answer all of your questions, anything you might have. Uh, please, this is an interactive uh, Google Hangout chat. Um, please type in questions, if anything, comments, uh, praise. We like praise. Um, anything that you want to say, you know, we're, we're, this is not pre-recorded. It is all live. Um, and yeah, we're going to do a few things. One, we're going to talk through the, the cloud bit, uh, how it works. Um, talk about the kind of ecosystem and ways that you can interact with it and things that you can do with it. Um, and show you some examples of that. Uh, and then just answer whatever questions anyone has. Cool. Right. So uh, I guess we were going to start off with just an introduction about the hardware itself. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk through that a little bit. Um, so our cloud module is a Wi-Fi uh, enabled interface that connects a little bit system to the internet. Um, you can see, I'll try and hold it up to the camera. There it is. That's the cloud bit. It's a pretty cool little device, um, but there really is uh, there's a lot more way to there's way more to it than just uh, the little module. In order for the hardware to be useful, there's uh, there was a ton of software development that we had to do as well. Um, there, it involved multiple teams working uh, you know across the organization, and it took about one year from when we started to to when it was over. So uh, and the result of that was uh, I guess what we're calling the cloud bit. Ecosystem and to give an ecosystem overview. Colin, <laughs> ecosystem is the cloud bit itself attached to a series of uh, apps that are in the the cloud, as it were. Uh, cloud itself being a bit of a misleading metaphor if you dig into it, but we're not going to go that far. Um, uh, and our ecosystem is we need a software place for the hardware to go up into the internet and connect to it, and for that to be a bridge to the rest of the larger internet and the ways that you can interact with it uh, and control it, uh, remotely read out what it's doing, all that kind of stuff that you want to do when you connect electronic hardware through the power of the tubes, which are the internet. Right. So, uh, so there's a couple. Do you want to go in the hardware first or platform first? Well, let's just give, give, a, give a quick demo of the kind of things okay. that, 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 the, that it can do. I guess we'll, okay, pull, so we'll, we'll pull the camera over here. The cloud bit has three major ways to interact. If you want to do this, yeah, let's put that over here. There's three major ways to interact with the cloud bit. There's bit to bit. And we'll start with this because this is uh, the hardware is already rigged up and everything. And bit to bit, uh, we talk about um, a lot in the world these days, machine to machine communication, uh, the ways machines talking to each other. Um, and the we've made it really, really easy to have a one-click method that the hardware can talk to each other. Um, so which ones are we going to have to talk to each other here? Um, so we, that, should, we should maybe yeah. show them this one. Yeah, let's do this. So uh, right here we've got, uh, this is a, I guess a bit of an audio demonstration, but we've got a, a more complex setup right now. And this is, uh, we've got two sending cloud bits right here and then two receiving cloud bits. The awesome thing about this is that you know they don't have to be. We have them right here on this desk, but these these modules could actually be anywhere on the planet. So 
um, if, if I had my if, if I had my setup here uh, with me, you know, in San Francisco, Colin could be operating it uh, here in New York, and with the following results, you can move this slider to turn the oscillator on, and you'll see the bar graphs here are tracking that. Make sure that the speaker is pointing towards the the camera and everything. Can you hear this? Okay. Yeah. So as we get like a higher node, you'll see I'm moving this slider up. The light here is going up in response to match where the slider is here. And we're hearing the here. And then you can control the other one with this one. So what's going on here is this cloud bit is sending to the cloud bit here that's controlling the pitch, and this cloud bit is sending to the one here which is controlling the filter. So if we can hopefully, the folks at home can see and hear the differences. But as a, basically that's the really, really simple yet extremely powerful way that they can talk to each other directly. So you see how any voltage change here controls voltage here. Of course, a little bit being a modular system, uh, this could be a, a dial, a knob, a motion sensor, a light sensor, uh, you know, any kind of input that we can have, whether environmental or people, and stuff over here. It could be any kind of output, whether in this case it's an oscillator and a speaker. It could, of course, be lights, motors, bells and whistles, and all the other stuff that goes on. So the other, uh, the other way that we can communicate with the cloud and the other cool things that you can do uh, it goes something like this. So here we have two other um, cloud bits that are connected to each other. And if we can zoom in, as I turn this knob, you'll see this number go up. That's an 80, 89, 90. I'm turning it down again, and it will go down to 70, 60. That kind of stuff is cool. Again, this is just the same thing that we had over here, but just with uh, a number instead. Uh, now, the other thing we can do, which is very cool, is now that we have hardware connected through the internet, we can do fun stuff connecting hardware and software. So there's, if I can get a good angle on the phone, um, we're going to have this number. As I move the, the slider here, if the internet doesn't die on us, having funny problems with the internet these days, started to move. Oh, the internet. So... <laughs> If I press this, it started to move, and then the internet crashed on us. Thankfully, we have many different internets, so the one we're broadcasting from didn't cut us off. Uh, but now it's starting to move again. Okay, okay good. good. We got it. We're back. We're back. Okay, so we're moving this knob, and this guy's changing. It's all going to be amazing. So that's an example of I'm controlling something on the software, and it's changing something out over on the hardware. So that's where uh, the web to bit kind of communication. And then we have uh, a similar but inverse relation to things where um, pressing the button on a hardware is going to change a, a dial over here. We can have this be a dial or a number reader. And that's an example of it's communicating from the hardware to the software. So with this simple mechanism powering our modular system, we can do all kinds of amazing stuff. Uh, the first level of it is uh, direct control and readout, this kind of thing like we were just showing you. Um, so you can you know, press a button and have it turn on the circuit to do whatever you want, uh, open a door, uh, raise a flag. Uh, we have stuff in the office here where um, we're using the next level of inter integration is we have partnered with IFT. If anyone's not familiar with IFT, it's really, really awesome. It's ifttt.com meaning if this then that dot com uh, and it's a really simple and powerful way to plug internet services together so we have a channel on if where you can say if cloud bit then anything uh, and then uh, the anything could be a Google Docs it could be a text message it could be whatever you want anything they have there they have over a hundred uh, services web services increasingly other hardware platforms you could have if little bits then Philips Hue Lite uh, all this kind of stuff, amazing. Um, and we can the, the if stuff can do web to bit or bit to web. You can have uh, motion sensors, trigger text messages, whatever this kind of stuff. But you can also have uh, Facebook lights uh, turn on, you know, sirens and bells and whistles down on the hardware. So 
that, that's a really powerful connection. There is uh, a question coming in that actually directly relates to the next sentence I was going to say anyway, which is there is a third way to deal with this habit, which is uh, a little more advanced but very, very powerful, which is through our API. Uh, so every bit, every cloud bit uh, at once connected has an endpoint on uh, uh, HTTP API. Uh, so if you are into that uh, crazy programming codey stuff, you can do really, really awesome stuff uh, connecting directly to it very simply. We have client libraries that you can use. Uh, and so the question that's accessing that is, uh, how can I go about developing my own app that works with the cloud bit? You can do it by picking whatever way you normally like to develop things on the internet in the software world. Um, we use JavaScript and Node.js a lot, uh, things like that, but uh, whatever. Python, you can do Perl. You like Perl, right? Yeah. Perl's my turn. This kind of stuff. Uh, anything you can do, you write whatever app, and it's just interacting with an uh, HTTP API, which happens all the time in the internet land. And suddenly, you have a window and a direct connection, control and readout from a hardware device. Um, in literally seconds. So it's uh, very fun stuff. And we're seeing amazing stuff already. It hasn't been very long. Amazing stuff. People are doing crazy things with, you know, with this that we could never have imagined. So we're, we're really, really excited. All right. That's great. Uh, I, we, have, we have another question. And actually, this is one I prepared for, so that's a good one. It's, uh, can you tell us about the development process of the cloud bit itself? And um, you know, it's. Uh, yeah, I do know a bit about that. It took us about a year. We spent like the major part of our lives for you know, like I say, about a year now. And uh, what we started with was a, a self-contained radio module that we that, that we bought off the shelf more or less. And it was a great product. And it's like it's this guy right here. This is the original one that we built. And um, you know, it connects to Wi-Fi and provides basic functionality, which was a really awesome thing. But after we got after we got into it, it was it turned out it was a little more limited than we wanted uh, our cloud bit to be. We wanted something that we could grow and expand as uh, as the product you know as as we got more familiar with the product and what it could do. And so what we decided to do was put together a, a, a complete embedded Linux computer basically, and that's what the cloud bit is right now. It's it's uh, it's a combination of a complete Linux computer. Uh, embedded Linux. Uh, it has a Wi-Fi router, it, it, or I should say, it can turn itself into a Wi-Fi router. It's a little bits to internet converter, and it is also an internet to little bits converter, and that's uh, and it's all packed into that tiny module. I'm going to go through the uh, the various parts of it so you can see uh, which parts I'm talking about. Uh, let's see here. This guy right there is an off-the-shelf. Wi-Fi USB adapter, and that's our radio. That's how we connect to the internet. The big square in the middle is the CPU. That would be the equivalent of, I guess, the motherboard in a, you know, on a on a regular desktop computer. Um, the uh, the you'll see that there's a, a switch down here. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and get it even closer. That's a switch. That's basically the equivalent of a keyboard. And then this is an LED. Which is our one pixel screen display. Non right, by switch we mean button. Button, yes, a button, <laughs> sorry. A button. On the back, you can see this this large rectangle is the memory chip, so that's the same as your memory. And then here this is a, a micro SD card holder, and the micro SD card is the equivalent of the hard drive in this case. So it's a it's it's a pretty cool system. Um, there's a few I guess there's a few uh, uh, a few statistics about it, and that is mainly that um, most of the work on this was actually done through software and, and, and programming because the hardware itself is it's kind of a fixed system that's not all that difficult to put together. But we had to, uh, over, over, over the development period of this, we had to actually develop and or modify uh, something along 6,600 lines of code or more. Uh, we, we dealt with uh, over 600 over 600 files that we had that we had to modify on this. It was a it was a very large project, and that was just that's just the firmware that runs on the cloud bit itself. The um, we had to develop an entire uh, Linux distribution, which we use as a highly modified Arch Linux distribution, and then we had to develop the user space firmware that uh, that ran on top of it, uh, all all at the same time modifying this so that it'll run on a tiny ARM. On processors, so it was uh, it was a real adventure, and we're really stoked that it happened. 
Um, and and uh, let's see here. That's pretty much the cloud, the story of the cloud bit development itself. Um, in parallel, we had to, of course, make the cloud. Yeah. Then make the cloud bit because the, the the cloud without the bit it, it doesn't help anybody, and the bit without the cloud doesn't help anybody either. So we they really need to work uh, in really close communication. Uh, so the cloud, uh, as as such, is a series of different applications that handle different parts of the, what has to go on. At the base of it, it's uh, we do everything in Node.js, which is a, a very fun, pretty accessible, and super fast uh, and easy to scale um, technology. Uh, and we like JavaScript because we kind of feel like we could have done this in the 90s, uh, and we're just doing it now. It's fun. Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> um, so the different parts of it, there's the part that the cloud bit itself wakes up and connects to directly. So there's one kind of entity, which is the uh, device server, we call it, uh, and that deals with the devices. It opens socket, uh, TCP socket connections, um, and handles communication back and forth to the hardware itself. Um, and then there's separate applications that uh, they all talk together through we use a, a Redis system both for a data store and for a messaging system. We're using the Redis PubSub uh, feature that, for us, was just very quick and easy to spin up. Uh, and performance is great. It scales pretty, it scales pretty well. Um, it's, it's, it's getting us to basically a really good milestone of, uh, of awesomeness. Um, and then, so we have the device server that deals with these guys. We have uh, HTTP API endpoint that uh, handles you know, all the stuff we're talking about of um, that you know, people can write to our API. Uh, oh, I just got a message. We're going to open this in a second. <laughs> um, we got, <laughs> that's good. Uh, we got a, a message. Uh, there's the HTTP endpoint. We also have a streaming API. So on our apps, we have WebSocket uh, streaming server that we're using for the communication of our web app. Um, there's a few other kind of admin, back end kind of applications, uh, a bunch of stuff basically in the cloud. It's very fun. So uh, in the... Uh, well, uh, this delivered just, by this Airmail. just in, Airmail, <laughs> a question from Rory Steele. Can many apps control one cloud bit, or is it just one to one? That's a good question. The whole basis of the architecture is everything to everything. So you can definitely have, uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, we've had people do uh, ift recipes. So an ift recipe is basically a feature that you build on ift. So you can say like one recipe would be, if I get an email with low priority, then send an output to my cloud bit of, uh, I don't know, 20%. Uh, then another recipe would be, and it's like basically thinking of it as a separate app. You're wondering, you know, can many apps control it? Yes, because at the same time, if you get an email with a low priority that sends a 20%, which is a, a green light, uh, and then you can get another recipe that is having a totally separate interaction saying, well, if I get an email with regular priority, I want to get uh, you know 80%, so it's going to get an orange light. Um, and if I get an email with high priority, then I want 100%, which is going to be a red light. So you can have different apps controlling down to your cloud bit. And that's at basically the, same time. the simplest level as well, because yeah. if you want, if you use the API, then there's it's basically you can program it any way that any way you want. Yeah. And then the other side of the mini apps is that yes, you can have uh, one app that's just listening to the input. You can have a sensor here and one app that's you know, listening to the input you know, every hour or something and tracking that data somewhere. So you have a temperature sensor, and you want to every hour uh, track the temperature, you know, graph that over time or something. You can have that. And at the same time, another app can be uh, controlling the output, turning on your lights with this at the same time. So you can say, uh, yeah, you can have a bunch of different interactions going in many ways. Also, you can have so that there's one cloud bit sending and many cloud bits receiving from the same one. So you could have like a controller and a multi uh, see, you know, a multi series of actions that happen. Uh, so you, there's really a really and you can, you can talk to, to multiple cloud bits at the same time. Indeed. Like, uh, what is our web project that we're talking about last week? Yeah. This guy is actually uh, there's cloud bits inside here. You can turn them around. There they are. <laughs> They're actually scraping the internet right now for weather data. 
And uh, I think there, these are all controlled off of a single API, correct? Yeah, there's yeah, there's uh, an app single going to yeah, single yeah. program yeah. is going to get weather information from the weather underground API. We like the weather underground to pool web uh, service, and it makes reference to something interesting. Go look it up. <laughs> um, and it's grabbing weather data for we're in New York, so we're grabbing weather data from New York. Uh, we're grabbing the current temperature and sending it to this cloud bit. At the same time, we're sending the low and high uh, midterm forecast. And we don't we don't see it very well on the screen, but uh, go to our website, littlebits.cc, you check the projects page, you can look into this in detail and tons of other projects, by the way. But this is an example of one where we have an app. Uh, it's actually a pretty simple application um, made by somebody who's not actually a programming expert. We had a bit of help, uh, but it's the kind of stuff that you can really dig, dig into if you want to you know, start experimenting with this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a super awesome project. It, it really shows how uh, the cloud bit can be used for actually really super practical uh, and useful purposes. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of like, you know, science things and all that. And the cloud bit would basically allow you to use, take, take our little bit system, uh, plug together any number of sensors and switches or, or, uh, or motors, whatever, what have you, and use the cloud bit itself as a scientific instrument. So you could take data from your little bit system that you designed. You want to design a, a temperature sensor in this case, or you want to design, uh, you want to design something that detects if doors are open and closed, and it can actually notify you via the internet, and you just build it yourself. You don't have to go out and buy, uh, you know, some, some pre-built uh, product that, that does that for you. You can experiment, iterate as many times as you want. So it's, uh, it's, a, really awesome, it's a really awesome system that allows you to get data straight out of the real world and onto the internet for you to use any way that you want. The other thing that's cool to, that's cool to talk about is this Kind of thing when you're like you get to do this, you can do this, you can build it yourself. Me, I'm an engineer. When I hear I get to build it myself, I think, but now I have to build it myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the cool thing that me, not as a hardware person, I love about it, the little bits is that the building it myself is like, okay, now I built it myself. Great. Uh, I want to put on that uh, there's a switch on the door, and I want to get notified when that door opens. Okay, I put a button. I realize that uh, that gets triggered in uncertain cases. So I want to put a motion detector because I want to get uh, notified when there's motion. OK, snip, snip, snap, there we are. And then we're getting the same behavior that we've uh, plugged into the cloud. We're still tracking that data. But the hardware was literally a snap. Uh, very it's, easy it's, to do. It's, it's modular. It's reprogrammed. The hardware itself is reprogrammable in the same way that the software is. It's, uh, it makes things really easy. Uh, there, is, there appears to be another. <laughs> we got another question. Another here. question off of the internet coming yeah. through ball mail. I, I love how they converted the internet chat into paper airplanes these days. It's cool what they're doing with Google with the technology. They convert chats to paper airplanes. Um, so the question here is Do you plan to release the source codes of the internal CloudBit distribution? So that's a very good question. We are a little From bit... Olivier Minard. Olivier Minard. Good. Uh, I can't even say his name because I speak French. <laughs> um, as an open source hardware company, we are very much dedicated to um, the learning and uh, you know expansion and the general knowledge sharing that happens with open source. Uh, as you know, all of the hardware, PCB layouts, circuit diagrams, everything for all of the current library is available for download you can get from GitHub from our site. The cloud bit is uh, no different and we're just a little, I feel like at this, we're a little behind on doing it because we're busy building it. Yes, we're going to release the source. We've used some G uh, GPL license projects within the cloud bit and we're going to be releasing that stuff because not only uh, do we have to, but we want to. Yeah. Some of the stuff uh, we're not going to release today because we want to tidy. There's so we've got to tidy a few things up. We want to put it out in the public. You want it to be a little clean. And we want to make sure that uh, some of the stuff we're going to protect just for security purposes. Yeah, well, there's, there's certain things there's that, stuff about the encryption and things like that, that that would be a bad idea. To release. Yeah, there's like a security models, mm -hmm. uh, encryption, uh, connection. Uh, it, we're really, really cognizant. I've done a lot of work on the back end of the uh, cloud bit, the cloud itself, the connection and communication between them. Uh, we've done a lot of work to make sure that those are not hackable. Uh, people can't be listening or controlling your stuff uh, remotely and all that kind of stuff. So there are parts of the cloud and the 
uh, and uh, Cloud Bit that we're not going to release just to you know protect everyone who's using it. But uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned for that stuff. We'll let you know uh, when there'll be parts that you can parts that you can check out. That's right. Uh, and there, uh, we we were getting another internet question from Carolyn Minia, and that is uh, it's a long one. So hold on a second here. Uh, it says the Cloud Bit reads the software off a micro SD card. Where can we get one of these for programming the Cloud Bit? And what programmable lang what programming languages would be supported to make the bit tick and be able to use the Wi-Fi radio module well while connected to the net? Programmers may want to know how this bit works when they're assembling their circuits. Um, okay, Carolyn. So uh, that's kind of it's pretty similar to the last question. And uh, what we're saying right now uh, is that there are no user serviceable parts on the cloud bit. Um, so we re actually recommend that you don't remove the SD card. Um, but that being said, we're currently working on ways that we can increase user programmability throughout our system. And the best example of that would be the Arduino module, which is really easy to program for the USB interface. Um, as far as the cloud bit is concerned, uh, there's a web API that you can use for programming. And we're also, as Colin was saying, we're working on ways to open up the hardware system to the extent that's sensible and secure. And uh, there hope to be making a programming interface as well uh, possible for that in addition to just releasing the source code. Um, but at this, it's a work in progress at this time, so just stay tuned and uh, it, it's going to happen. Colin's working on, Colin's working on, a, uh, on a demo right now of, uh, of the API, it looks like. Yeah, so how do I share my screen? Technical people. <laughs> <clears throat> we just built complicated internet systems. I don't know how to run a G-chat. There's like, I think, a button like right? a screen share. I think the easiest way is if I share my window. And I'm going to show you something that goes like this. So we have, uh, like I said, we have an API that I'm going to I'm going to show just a very, very simple call from a terminal. Uh, to call this API, and then we're going to switch back to the camera and we show what it does. So an example is um, there is uh, a command here that's doing an HTTP post. The HTTP post, it goes to the URL of the cloud that I've got its ID. You can get that from the uh, logged in cloud control panel. And then an access token, which is the same thing uh, you can get from when you're logged in. It basically, now the script uh, goes makes a post to this endpoint, and then it's going to put change the output of the bit. It's really, really, it's like basically the simplest thing you can do in web uh, interactions between services. Okay, I'm back. Um, it's a And now we'll see that on the hardware side. Where is it? I go back to my terminal. I'm just going to rerun the same command. And you see this number changes from 0 to 99. Uh, and that's basically the simplest, just dumb trigger of it. I just told it, you know, trigger your output for a few seconds, and it just goes to the high voltage, and then it goes back to the low voltage. So uh, again, showing the really simple system that allows for all of the powerful connections and uh, interactions once you get complicated stuff going on on the hardware side. What about uh, what about uh, data logging? How do we how do we do that currently? So that's a good question, Jeff. There's a, a couple of things going on. One, from the really quick uh, kind of user serviceable end of stuff, um, everyone who has a cloud web, you you all can get um, uh, data going on from your cloud web in a couple of simple ways. One being um, and we're doing this here at the at, at Little Bits HQ. Uh, we have um, a machine that we rigged up um, on our water cooler. So now every time somebody basically every time somebody presses the button to fill up their glass of water, it will send a ping uh, through a cloud bit to Ift, and then that data goes into a um, that data goes into a Google spreadsheet through the Ift traffic. So now we're getting a big uh, growing data set of all of the instances of all of the times that people got water. Dubious what we're going to do with this data, but we're <laughs> collecting data, and it's cool. We're going to be able to make a graph 
after a while that will show our water usage. I mean, we're going to see like it goes up in the week when we're here, it goes down in the weekend when there are less people here. But you know, kind of there, you, you can do ideas. Yeah, you yeah. can do. You can log other stuff. You can do stuff. Yeah. So that's <laughs> that, that's one example. The other example is uh, if you go, you know, further into API land, you can do a ton of stuff with with data. You can have it so that you're, you know, doing sensor readings and locking them either to Google spreadsheets. Oh, that. whoa! Incoming teddy bear. Teddy bear <laughs> magic. Okay. Um, all kind of stuff. Once you're at the API level, you you can lock things like crazy. Okay. This is from Gardner Lansbury, and it, it asks, what framework are you using with Node.js? Express? It's a good question. Um, we are not using Express. We're not using a framework, uh, per se. Uh, we're using a number of common libraries. For our uh, routing and stuff, we're using Happy, um, which is a kind of a simpler, uh, a more kind of uh, bare bones layer of uh, routing and have uh, run basically. It's H A P I. Um, it's a really good one. Thanks, Ted. Uh, <laughs> um, and raising that in a few projects, and then you do stuff like use the request library for uh, calls. We're using um, async in a few places still, um, although we're moving away from that. We're using um, some like building block stuff like Lodash for uh, you know, really low level kind of manipulation functionality stuff, just like utilities. Um, there's what else are we using? Yeah, mostly the stuff because it's pretty custom is pretty custom. But obviously, we're relying on you know big open source projects where uh, where it makes sense. Hmm. So. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. There's another question from Stefan in Loveland, Ohio. Uh, the question is, how does hardware actually connect to software? Um, well, it, it's uh, the hardware is a computer, so its basic its basic job is to run software. Um, you could say that it boots up pretty much just like a desktop or laptop computer would. Um, and at that point, the stuff that we've written, the user pay, user space firmware takes over, where it uh, where it, it it'll establish a connection with the local Wi-Fi uh, network through the USB radio that's on it. Speaking through USB to the radio, it sends messages to the Wi-Fi router, and, and then starts looking starts looking for the cloud. Once it finds the cloud, then it, it initiates a, an encrypted communication session, and uh, the normal operation begins. So data is sent to the cloud, data is received from the cloud. Um, depending on how you've got the uh, how you've got it configured on you know uh, on a little bit's cloud itself. Just to go a little further into that. Because, um, like Jeff was saying, on the hardware is a computer. It, in this case, it's a pretty high-level computer because it's a full embedded Linux. But anytime you have hardware that's talking to computers, there's something software digital going on there. So you, you can't have just analog electronics talking to the internet because you need anyway a certain level of high-level communication <coughs> to uh, open protocols and transmit digital information and all this kind of stuff. It, um, the mechanism is we're opening a raw TCP socket uh, and holding that connection open and sending messages back and forth along that pipe, basically. So that's uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Ted said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, Teddy, Ted, Ted told, told us everything about that. I think we need to know. So, uh, what else have we got as far as questions from the web? Is it we have any more Teddy Grams? Yeah, the, I like uh, the Teddy Gram. The Teddy Gram was, was less threatening than the than the thirty pound ball of rubber yeah. bands question. <laughs> oh, no. uh, <laughs> handy to deliver. Yeah, no gram. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay, Olivier Minard again. Right. How do you configure which cloud bits talk to which cloud bits? I don't, can we share the screen for that and show them? It's it's a it's, it's a dead easy phone. interface. Yeah, yeah, I'll show yeah. on the phone. So we've all of the app stuff uh, and web interaction we've optimized for 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 mobile because it's very fun to use it on your phone. Let me see if I can get that focus here. Um, basically, this is what happens when you get into your uh, web uh, account. You'll have we happen to have a ton of cloud bits because we're us. Um, but then you'll like choose one, um, and then you'll go over here to settings. You can change the name of it, uh, and then you have an option here. If you have more than one cloud bit, then you basically get a I don't know if you can see this. You basically get a select, uh, you know, a regular select box where you can select the other bit that this one is following. 
So it's going to go this way as before. Uh, now it's just as simple as that. Now what happens on this, this bit that I'm talking about now, it's all going to come directly from the one that I subscribed it to. So it's a simple publish uh, subscribe model. Uh, and it's just as easy. I, I just did it. So it, it, it's really that, that simple. We wanted everything to be with the little bits philosophy so that the first way that you dig into it has the same satisfying feeling of just snapping your magnets. Um, and we've done a lot of work to make sure that that continues through the whole experience through the software. Software can be very complicated and very intimidating. Uh, and we want, we want it to be fun and easy uh, and everything. So that's, um, that's yeah, that's the, that, that is very easy, fun. Cloud, cloud module is awesome. Yep. And, uh, and as we're saying, you know, the, it's, it's the, it's instead of an analog to digital converter, it's a little bits to internet converter. And, and uh, if, if you're familiar with, if you're familiar with little bits, uh, the hardware platform enables you to do a lot of different things in the real world. That it's not just, it's not just going to be on your computer screen. It's going to be on your computer screen. It's going to be also in your home or you know, you know, in the bedroom, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question that is um, uh, Rick Green Scott from the, Twitter. Uh, yeah. So. Can the cloud handle multiple types of input? Is the question. Um, by multiple types, I would say what do you mean multiple types? But I'm just going to have to react. Yeah, it, it can take <laughs> it, it, no. It, it can it can take analog analog voltages that it, on the hardware level. On the hardware level, it accepts uh, an analog voltage between zero and five volts at the input, and it puts out an analog voltage between zero and five volts at its output. Um, it's also possible to. Uh, you know, to to use it in a digital fashion if you like, but um, basically it's 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 pretty simple. It's zero to five volts in, zero to five volts out. But in between that zero to five volts in, the zero to five volts out is the entire internet. So that's another kind of input and output that, <laughs> that, that basically is limited only by like what you can program or what it will allow. Yeah, it's really about. It's less about complex data at this point. If this is, I'll go like one one direction that you 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 can think about when you're talking about multiple types of input is like, can you accept JSON or can you accept XML and stuff? No, it doesn't do any of that because it's really about plugging things together, and and the communication and the pipe should just kind of be magic. So uh, it's really about thinking of like, this is Facebook and this is the light that I want to turn on, and I plug them together. And exactly how the input happens is the it is the magic part, is the part that we've spent a long time engineering uh, to just make it to make it just work. So the yeah again other types of input yes it can accept any type of input because just if you, it can accept temperature input because that's the number if if you know that it's coming from a, a thermometer you know that the stuff coming in is temperature input so you can do something. If it's uh, oh, we got another one. Now they're just throwing. Now they're just throwing questions out. <laughs> in a uh, crumble paper. <laughs> so yes, it can accept all kinds of input and input. But it's basically, it's basically, but it's basically one number at a time is what it comes down to. And those numbers can come fast, but you're not you're not going to be multiplexing, you know, uh, you know, complex data all at one time. It's 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 it is designed to be pretty much an atomic level system. Okay, if you were stuck on a desert island with four bits, oh, sorry, if you were stuck on a desert island, which four bits would you want to have? This is uh, this is a question from Mary from New York. Um, if I That's a good question. <clears throat> what do you want to do? I would definitely <laughs> want a power bit because without power, you don't have much going on in the electronics. I would definitely want a cloud bit. Because then I can plug into the internet, assuming we have Wi-Fi on this desk dragon, which I'm going to go with. I want that assumption. And then what else would I do? I might have an oscillator and a speaker, because I, like, um, I like analog synthesizers. And, and if I have, a, uh, if I have a, an oscillator and a speaker, then I can get all my friends to go on and play me tunes on their phones, which I'm going to hear broadcast through the cloud bit and through the oscillator and through the power of the, the, the internet in a little bit. 
That's my answer. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> I think I would, I would definitely, well, I mean, obviously power and I think cloud bit is pretty obvious, but um, I think I would also get an Arduino and a number bit. And then I would have to figure out some way to get the USB interface between the cloud module and the Arduino to work, which is currently not enabled. So there, there would be some hacking involved. But yes. after that, I would be able to, I would be able to program, I would use the cloud bit to program the Arduino and then it would, I, I could display numbers, and so like, that would be awesome to do on a desert island. I think. No, I thought you were gonna go in the direction of like, cause then you, you could program it to send and receive messages or something. But you're like, no, I just want to show numbers. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I'm on a desert island. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't even have a battery problem. Want to transmit like coordinates yeah. to them? No, that would no. be that would be super awesome. Ooh, like, maybe. maybe. We, we have, have to, to advance bits. Yeah, we have to work out the spark gap bit. We can do spark yeah, gap radio that way. We could transmit all frequencies simultaneously. Pretty awesome. Is there a, is there a, <laughs> is there a, ha a ham radio bit? I want a ham radio. Bit. You know, you know, um, <laughs> you know. Every everyone in the engineering uh, in the engineering team totally wants radio. So uh, we're we're probably looking at the future. Cool. All right, so um, I think we're going to wrap it at that point. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you have questions, please visit, visit us at littlebits.cc or, uh, you know, or check us out on the cloud forums. Okay? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh,